the pirate flag, often called the Jolly Roger. The traditional skull and crossbones has become a popular symbol in Hollywood, but it wasn't dreamed up by studios. The symbol has some very real historic context. Pirate flags depicting a skull and crossbones on either a black or red background did exist within the history of piracy. Of course, it would be silly to suggest all pirate ships carried a standard pirate flag. Not all pirates used them, and those that did usually had a symbol unique to their ship or captain. You shot. You could use some blood. Hey, hey, come on kids, we're in a hurry. One of the first European pirates to use the symbol most closely associated with Hollywood's Jolly Roger may have been Emmanuel Wynne, who in 1700 used a flag with crossbones, a death's head, and an hourglass. Wynne was a pirate in the North Atlantic and Caribbean. Wynne skirmished with the HMS Pool in the summer of 1700, about 20 years before the golden age of piracy. The captain of the HMS Pool, Captain Granby, documented the description of the flag, which is one of the first documented uses of the skull and crossbones for naval piracy, similar to what we know as the Jolly Roger today. Wynne's flag was believed to be a clear warning of death to those who didn't timely submit their cargo. The simplicity of the design made the message universal to vessels from all nations. Pirate ships always targeted poorly armed and slow ships, often crewed by men who did not own them or their cargo, so a civil transfer of booty was common. This may even include taking on extra men and sometimes freed slaves. Hollywood-esque bloody sword fights were rare. A good pirate knew a thing or two about economics and often had to resell many different types of cargo. In the 18th century, particularly in the Caribbean, the skull and crossbone symbol caught on, but they were rarely uniform. Many of these flags had hearts, daggers, initials, or whatever took a pirate crew's fancy. Pirates wanted their particular flag to be intimidating and hold notoriety to encourage a quick surrender. Typically, a black flag would indicate the pirates were willing to spare the crew and only take the plunder. If a red or bloody flag was shown, it meant no quarter would be given. A red flag often meant a fight to the death. Privateers, a type of sanctioned pirate by the government, who would only seek to pirate vessels that were enemies of the state, would typically fly modified versions of their nation's colors. When the War of the Spanish Succession ended in 1714, many privateers lost their legal support from their respective nations, and many did not want to give up their lucrative trade, so they turned from privateers to pirates. These were organized and skilled naval men, who formed interconnected groups, hence the rapid adoption of the Jolly Roger-themed flags in the early 18th century. The term Jolly Roger may have come from the term Julie Rouge, French for pretty red. It also may stem from Old Roger, which was an old colloquial English name for the devil. I accept that it does. In modern military use, the symbol has been used by many nations in many different branches of service, notably British submariners, French World War I aces, Hitler's SS, and on American Corsairs flying in the Pacific. In modern times, there are very few reasons for the skull and crossbone use, other than it looks intimidating. Corsair is another word for pirate or privateer, so it was fitting to see it on the aircraft, and the US Navy kept this tradition for future fighters as well. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on pirate flags. Feel free to add anything on the subject in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.